Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Some Dungeon Guy, and today I'm going to take you through a tutorial on how to digitize your maps. That's right, we're taking hand drawn maps or any other map you have laying around. We're going to digitize that into Wonder Draft. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And today, this video only, we're going to take the first five people to comment and digitize me, and we're going to take those maps for you, and I'm going to convert those into a Wonder Draft map so you don't have to. So let's get to it. Alrighty, folks, if you're still joining us, then you want to take your hand-drawn maps or maybe a copy of another map and turn it into a Wonder Draft map art piece, right? So here's what we're going to do. Uh, if you're familiar with Wonder Draft, you know you're going to open a new map. If you are unfamiliar with Wonder Draft, feel free to see one of my other videos where I give you some tutorials on some basic Wonder Draft functions. But for now, we're going to assume you have a basic knowledge of Wonder Draft, okay? So we're just going to do that. We're going to hit Portrait. Uh, I'm going to choose a size, you know, choose a size that you like. I'm going to use a four today. All right. Um, at this point, you know, you can use your, you can choose your different color themes and things like that to give your map a baseline color. Now you can change that at any time. So don't fret yourself over that too much. All right. We're going to hit OK. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start off our map a little differently than you may start off a normal Wonder Draft map. Now we're going to go over to the overlay function. OK. Underneath, you're going to see several different choices. Uh, you can lay down grids and frames and things like that. But right now we're going to want the trace tool. All right. So we're going to click on that trace tool over here in the top right. We're going to see trace an image. Well, we need an image to trace. So assuming that you have already made yourself a hand drawn map. Now, I used to use graph paper when I first started off running my campaigns uh, and have since uh, went into the land of uh, digital mapping. So uh, for now, we're going to use uh, a picture I already have loaded, ready to roll. Uh, if you do not have those, if you want to take a picture with your digital camera, the picture does not have to be great quality, to be really honest with you, because uh, you're going to be able to trace it and redo it in Wonder Draft anyway, okay? So, once we look, now we've got our picture here. Now, we're just going to take our map, and we're going to scale her on up, okay? Now you can drag it, you can click the little arrows, whichever way you like. Now, I like to give myself a little bit of a buffer, because, you know, while I'm making these maps digitally, I'm going to decide, man, I want to add some islands. I want to add some other character to the map, maybe some decorations. So give yourself just a little bit of room or don't. You know, it's really up to you. If you know that this is exactly what you want and you're not going to want to add to it, sure, do what you got to do. Uh, all right. So first step here, you can now see our map overlaid. Now you can change the opacity scale. OK, you can make it lighter, darker, whatever. Uh, just whatever helps you trace around what you're doing, because that is exactly what we're going to do. Now, we're going to start off with our land. All right. It's clicking on the land tab on the top left now we're going to go into this polygon lasso tool all right so what we're going to do is we're going to start off here and we're going to take this lasso tool and we're going to click now i do multiple clicks i click all over the place because i don't want my edges to be super straight now that being said we are going to go uh once we outline the entire island in this case uh, you can also certainly do regional maps where there's no islands no no uh, waterways really so that becomes a whole lot easier because you don't have to worry about uh, making it uh, water and land divided. So I'm clicking a whole lot of times just to give myself some uh, less than perfect edges. All right. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to trace around the outside because what we're going to do next is we're going to go into the land tool and we're going to form those edges so that they make a little more sense. Now, one thing about this step, now you can be as cautious and timid and, and patient as you'd like. Well, obviously, I'm not always super patient. And much like Bob Ross said, if you don't know who Bob Ross is, I encourage you to go check that out on YouTube. You know, there are no there are no real accidents. There's no uh, mistakes, right? There's only happy accidents. So uh, I find that when I'm converting these to digital, when uh, I make different shapes or different slight variations, they actually come out looking better because uh, when you're drawing with graph paper and a napkin or whatever it is you're drawing on, you're not as likely to have all the little indentations. Now we're going to right click. All right. And that's going to highlight our area. Right hand side, we're going to go to the fill button. Now we have filled that with land. And you're like, well, it doesn't exactly match Mr. Dungeon Guy. Yeah, well, you're you're right. It doesn't. So what we're going to do to fix that, we're on the land tool. Now we're going to go to the land raise tool. All right. And again, this step is completely unnecessary. It really depends on how you want your map to look. Uh, if we zoom in just a little, I've got my brush half and half, okay? So uh, I don't want it to be too big. I don't want it to be too harsh when I brush, but basically just brush the coast. And hopefully you can see that it's making uh, little variations to the edges. Now, sometimes I'll leave the little uh, islands that pop up like so, right? So like, bam, now I've got like a little marsh area if I want one. Uh, and one big thing I'm about is storytelling through map making, right? I've done videos on that. And honestly, it's one of the best things that's ever helped me. Uh, you're making maps, you come across and you accidentally make a shape like 
see this is the shape right here now it kind of looks like a hammerhead so if you're not fully developed into your campaign and you're just making maps to kind of set yourself maybe that's hammerhead lake or hammerhead cove or something right so some of these things come out of accidents you know but really this is just to rough it up and to make it look good you can go quick you can go slow slower you go the more it's going to build up so it's going to become more solid on the edges right and again as you can tell i'm just kind of whipping through it um again giving some variation just to break it up right because you don't want super strong lines again the basic controls of wonder draft i'm holding down space bar while i drag and that helps you move the map uh similarly the control key while uh, scrolling in and, in and out with your mouse button third mouse wheel is going to let you zoom in and out now we've made it pretty much all the way around all right boom and just like that aha look a little rougher right that's kind of what we want now so the next step is really up to you i prefer to go ahead and do my paths okay because i'm going to do my big roads uh just to kind of outline those and then i put my stamps for my assets on top of that so it hides the road a little bit okay so i'm going to go to the path tool i'm going to start at one side and again uh path tool man that's a very thing you have tons of different uh you have tons of different styles of lines you can make it rough you can make it wider th uh, thinner things like that now you generally want your road to be a little rough right so i've got it up a little bit about a third of the way um because otherwise it's going to be like dead straight okay and again we're clicking where we want the road to kind of turn so i click fairly frequently to keep some sort of flow uh, with that layer of roughness you see where it sort of goes out on uh it curves itself a little bit and then right click and we're going to stop that road okay we're going to left click again and notice i'm just building the longer pieces kind of all together if you really want your road to be in a very specific location uh zoom in uh, do smaller clicks you can change that roughness uh and your thickness and things to match what you're looking for like i said i'm going over the biggest sections first right clicking to end the road uh, and then i'm going to start up here all right kind of doing the same thing and again, I've got a little bit of roughness to these roads, but they're not, uh, you know, they're not like super jagged and wavy because I have a general line that they need to follow. Now, I'm not super particular about those lines, but um, this map example is one I actually use in a campaign. So, you know, it's something that I'm fairly familiar with, so I don't want to deviate too, too much from that. And again, if you're just starting off, uh, you know, there's a little uh, accidental curvy road sometimes can be, you know, a, a boon or a uh, bane or a boom. Right, so they can accidentally uh, work in your favor. So again, we're just chasing those lines over, clicking periodically to give the road a little bit more curve. And again, that roughness is gonna change how much it actually curves, being as precise or imprecise as you wish to be, no pressure, okay? Now, we have basically all of our lines uh, traced out. I'm gonna pop over to the layer tool, we're gonna go to the settings, we're gonna change the opacity, and you can sort of see that I did in fact get all of the paths lined out. Now. Next thing I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to symbols. All right, so we're going to build this, uh, build some symbols, uh, mainly the cities first. All right, I'm just using a rough asset patch, custom colored town. Tons of assets available for Wonder Draft. You can certainly download them all over the internet. Okay, uh, as opposed to some other map makers that come with tons of assets, as you know, Wonder Draft starts off with a very basic set and allows you to scale up from there. Uh, remembering that. Uh, like I'm using the ones with the red roofs just so that they have a specific look to them. I'm going to scale it down so it sort of fits where I drew a city in. Okay. I'm going to use the bigger icon to make some of my larger cities. I'm going to scale down to, let's say, this is going to be uh, a little town with a keep in it. So we're going to slap a keep down there. And then, all right, so we're going to go to, you know, and these are all castles. Again, just as a rough example, uh, we're going to switch it up a little bit to some of these smaller towns. Again, you can change those assets to whatever you like. This is just for the sake of simplicity. And I kind of like this pack. It's not that bad. So now we have a little bit of differentiation between the larger cities, the smaller towns, and uh, then maybe over here for this coastal villa, we're going to pop it right over there. All right, so now we have the basic assets down. And again, none of these things are permanent. All of them are changeable down the road. So don't feel pressured to do anything you don't want to do. By golly, this is your map and you can keep it that way. All right. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my water tool. All right. Now I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to take a lake tool um, because, again, I don't have to have a specific layout for my water uh, other than the rough placement. So slap a lake there and we're going to let's see, slap a lake there. And if you don't like it, you can certainly cycle through the various lakes. All right slap two side by side now we have one big lake all right i don't have a whole lot of lakes as you may notice so i just have the two larger one uh and then when i go into regional maps i'll form little lakes if there's you know something just a mile across or something like that because that would be hard to pick up on a on a worldwide map now we're going to go to the river tool any any uh body of water is going to have a little bit of a river 
coming off of it. Well, I guess not every bottle of body of water. So left again, left clicking to pick up the beginning of that. Um, got the roughness set up a little bit, right clicking to finish. I'm just going to throw off a couple of rivers right through here. Completely up to you. Again, the map is your baby. Okay, so we've got a couple waterways. Pretty simple. The main water behind the map is actually going to already be colored in. So as far as coloring in your water, you don't have to worry about that as long as you're using the uh, like the lake and the water tools. And of course, you can uh, go over to the appearance and change that. You can brush on water so you can draw your own lakes and rivers and things like that. Uh, just kind of hot and hot and fast going uh, going for the easy route. All right, now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to symbols. We're gonna switch it up to, let's say trees, all right? Now I've gotten those drawn with these, uh, well, I'm gonna call them trees, but whatever these little hand-drawn things are that represent trees in my head, uh, as you can tell by my expertly penned uh, legend to this map. This map is several years old, I've kind of dug it out of the closet for this, and I'm gonna go ahead and start placing my trees. Now, notice that I'm using the white trees, and that will allow me to color in the forested areas. Same thing as the mountains we're gonna do here in a moment. Um, it allows me to add whatever color I want to them so I'm not stuck to whatever the trees are. So maybe you wanna use some trees in an area that is going to be uh, of one specific uh, tribe or you know one specific region. You can paint that a different color uh, and it allows the trees to be painted that same color, okay? So kind of tossing some trees down uh, along where we had them mapped out. Uh, you know, some of my map tutorials, I'll show you that when you cross in between mountains and trees, you're going to blend them a little. Uh, on this size and sort of scale of a regional map, I'm not going to do that as much, uh, you know, because the, the transition is just not going to be as obvious because it's going to taper out to almost nothing. So once we've got our main forested areas, heck, let's throw a little bit of forest right through here. Okay, kind of changing it up on the fly too. Uh, we're gonna go to mountains next, all right? Just the same way, we're gonna choose some white uh, colorable mountains. Uh, that is one cool thing that Wonderdraft does that other mapping programs do not. Um, so we're just gonna paint some of those in here. And then I'm gonna scale a few of those up. I like the center of the mountain ranges to be sort of larger ones. And again, you can change the opacity of your uh, tracing tool to, to suit your needs. Um, you know, to be able to see through a little better. I happen to kind of know where I'm at. And, you know, again, this is sort of a rough idea. I can go back and touch it up uh, hundreds of times for free without having to worry about eraser marks and things like that. That is the beauty of a digital map. Now, you might not have a digital map when you're sitting into your office cubicle or on the bus or wherever you might be, but you have a wild idea for a new idea, uh, new location. Well, boom, draw it out, draw it on a napkin, draw it on the back of a textbook. Don't do that, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, draw it on any sort of legal surface you may find yourself encountering with. So we've gotten some mountains drawn in. We think we got a pretty good swath of them. All right. And missed a couple of trees up here. Scale those back down a little. All right, great. Now, uh, again, I sort of made the, made the basic markings in pencil. Hopefully you will remember what you marked yourself. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up to land. All right, so the land, we're gonna go ahead and get colored in. Um, going down to the paint tool. Uh, let's start off with some forest, all right? So I'm just gonna brush the trees, pretty much. Uh, and now my planes are gonna be the same color, right? And I'm doing, here's what I'm doing. I'm doing the green and brown parts first. Uh, and we're gonna go back and make some sand colors. One thing I like to do on all my maps is hit the edges uh, of all of the land masses. Because, um, you know, most of the time when you cross over from land to ocean, there's gonna be a beach there. So I like to go ahead and get that detail sort of tacked in again. I'm lifting every once in a while with the mouse in case I have, in case I need to control Z, uh, I can undo uh, without having to redo a whole bunch of work. So just every couple of swipes, we're gonna pick that up. And again, I'm painting all the tree areas. I'm painting the uh, the areas I've listed as like grasslands or plains, depends on what we call them. And again, I can hit the mountains because I'm gonna go back over the mountains in a few minutes here. In just, just a moment. All right. So we've gotten the majority of the green parts colored in. Next, we're gonna go ahead and change that color. Uh, sometimes I'll do a custom color, but today uh, we're just gonna paint the mountains uh, standard brown. Again, update that for, for whatever you'd like, change your colors. Um, that doesn't really matter as much. And if you, know, you wanted this region to be controlled by a particular group of individuals, then you know you can change the color and it'll indicate that better for your players. This is for uh, more of a sort of real feeling map. Now I'm overlapping a little bit into the green. Okay, not a problem, especially when they touch. And that is just to sort of blend those colors together, which 
again, we'll get into. And I've got some more information on that, blending and uh, sort of decorating your map in some of my other videos, if you are interested. All right, we've got some sanded areas here, some sand areas here. You notice I have a big empty desert. Well, on future copies of this map, as in after I drew the map, I actually, uh, I did make some changes, which again, is one of the things about making temporary maps on digitally, so you don't have to worry about erasing and things like that. So I can kind of update it as my players go. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to choose a custom color. It's going a little bit into the orange spectrum. Uh, maybe a little more yellow, maybe a little less yellow. Okay, we're going to choose a color. Let's call it that. Choose it. All right, now this is going to be my main sand texture. Keeping in mind that the main part of the parchment map is going to be pretty much sand colored. All right, just as a preview, we're going to go to overlay again. We're going to change that opacity. And you can see that the colors are already starting to get where they want to be. Uh, but again, so we are going to paint in with our custom color. I'm going to take this brush and I'm just going to loosely hit the edges. The parts I have shaded, uh, these sort of dark parts, are areas that I wanted to be like a larger beachfront. Okay. Uh, but by tracing the outline of your land, you're going to add little beaches to the outside, right? Again, small touch. I kind of like it because it makes the map kind of pop. It outlines it. You don't have to do that. Certainly an optional step, just something I've kind of grown to do it. I do find that in larger maps, uh, it sort of makes your map pop a little more when you do that. Again, digging into the land a little bit in some places. Again, no mistakes, only happy accidents and stuff, right? Now that we've got our sand drawn on the outside, we are pretty much done. Now this is obviously a rough copy. Uh, you can go in and add some more details and things to it. Uh, but that is pretty much all there is to it. You have now walked through how to create your hand-drawn map, as seen here on graph paper, all the way down to a custom map in Wonderdraft. Alrighty, folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more content just like this or other content, go ahead and hit subscribe. If you want to suggest something, go ahead and hit that comment button. Leave me a comment below. If you'd like to have your own map digitized, leave me a comment saying, hey, digitize my map. I appreciate your time today. And as always, thank you and have a good day.